Hello, Moglets. I forgot to hit the record button. I should know about that. We're already farming for Yunjin here. Just getting straight into the action. I already explained some things, but whatever. They weren't that important, I guess. <laughs> We're farming her mats currently. Um, taking Ningguang here because she is awesome. Uh, we're not going to bother using anyone's burst now, I guess, since he's almost dead. Let's just end it with, like, a Ningguang charge or whatever. There we go. Dang, we got a big gemstone here. That's always kind of pog to see. Not a good plume, but three. Uh, Rift Borns here. We'll need those for our Yunjin as well. Uh, we've already made a little bit of progress on her. She is currently level 40. I do think 70 would also suffice if we can't get her higher um, for the showcase because that's when, you know, their last passive was unlocked. Essentially, everything after 70 is just stat bumps. While we're waiting for Wolf Lord to reset, we can uh, start farming some of her books. I'm sure we will need some of these. In her case, we do need Diligence books. We actually have a lot of uh, purples here, uh, but not quite enough silvers. So yeah, we definitely will need to farm that a little bit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, I think, the fastest dungeon ever. That was 26 seconds. Those drops, though, ding, two purples. And then another purple. So we're having really good luck with our book drops today. We do mainly need silvers, though. I guess we will need the purples later, so it's fine, but yeah. Maybe that one beat it. Jesus Christ, 25. Nice, five silvers. That's what we're actually looking for. I think we'll just use all of our condensed here. The other main thing we need is the wolf drops, and you can't use condensed on them anyway. As far as I remember, we need a total of uh, 63 silvers, was it, to get all talents to six? I don't know if her basic is super necessary right now. I know she boosts normal attack, so maybe. But I don't imagine she's going to be the normal attacker, you know? Uh, so... We might already have enough. Let's just use this last one anyway. And there we go. We got up to 51 plus 36 of these, so I think we're good. Don't really think Goro's healing is quite enough, but uh, but Ningguang is super awesome at this phase with the little uh, wolf heads. So that's why I'm bringing her along. And now I guess we're going to finish it off just with some uh, git, uh, Ito charge to theirs. Yes. Very strong boy. Bard's Feather, kind of bad-ish. Uh, it's actually not that bad. Two more of these. We also will need some Glaze Lilies. She is like, I don't know, the second person that needs these now. No one ever needed these. It's crazy. As far as I know, they're only in like one or two spots, mainly here in, in uh, the Leo S city near all those uh, other flowers. And then I think up here in the village as well. Chi Chi should also help us a little bit here as well. E and back to Wolfie Boy. Tax circlet, pretty bad. And that should be enough to get her to the next star. Let's see. It is indeed. Uh, all right. We can also see how many more of the uh, glazed lilies we need. Dang, we might actually be running kind of low on books as well. Already out of Hero's Wit. Yeah, we need one more Glaze Lily. Three to four more Wolf Runs as well. So not too bad, not too bad. And uh, yeah, thankfully these are her like secondary materials. Obviously I have so many masks that since they come from Hillichurls. These are a lot harder to see out here, but thankfully we don't need too many of them. All right, guess we're good with the Glaze Lilies. Of course, still got all the Wolf Lords to fight, so let's not waste any time. Yes, three. That means maximum of two more runs and minimum because we need four still. Now we got three, just need one left. Again, doesn't really matter, two runs. Uh, Geo Goblet, not bad I suppose, maybe as an off piece. Let's go ahead and craft this last uh, purple we need as well while we're waiting for the Wolf Lord to respawn. There we go, let's make sure that's the last thing we need here so we can finish her off. Yes indeedy, just one more run and then we're good. And the final couple strikes there. Here we go, and what else did we get? A Plume of Death? Yeah, it's just all kind of meh as usual. Been a while since I saw a really, really good gladiator piece. Let's finish her off with this video. I think I did the same thing with Ningguang stopping at 70, and she performed perfectly fine. Like I said, at 80 is just a little stat bump. Besides for her, god mode is going to be a while since I don't... Right now, I'm, I'm kind of not really planning on you know, getting her to C6. My wallet needs to recover a little bit as well. Uh, like, I've been doing that for the last several four stars. You know, forcing them up to C6, and then, you know, as a little side bonus, the five star, like our Ito, for example, usually goes up a few constellations as well, and that's cool, but yeah, like it's kind of expensive. Excuses aside, let's go ahead and get her talents up the rest of the way. For now, I'm just going to do her E and burst. I'm not too sure yet if she can do some decent damage, but I really like that whole, like, perfect counter sort of thing going on, like, kind of what Beto has, and, uh, that's 
that's the power of that we were leveling up on her, on her skill. And usually, you know, first showcase of characters, I like to, you know, go through and do a quick explanation of what they're actually doing. Basic attack is basic, nothing to see here. Her skill too is pretty simple in nature as well. You can press or hold it. Pressing it is a geo attack. Holding it is also a geo attack, but it'll take a long time to charge. And depending on how long you charge, it'll do more and more damage. As you can see, it does scale off of death. Everything scales off of death except for her basic attack, which is why I think it's not going to be super important to raise. What does make her skill interesting is her first passive here, true to oneself. It says using opening flourish at the precise moment when Yunjin is attacked will unleash its level two charge hold form. So what I want to do really quick is see how long that actually takes to fully charge up. So that was it. Uh, not too long. Obviously, if you can do it instantaneously, uh, like with that perfect strike, it's much, much faster. And you know, if her shield breaks, she will prematurely do it and it might not get all the way up to uh, level two. So you'd be losing out on some damage there. Yunjin's burst is slightly more complicated and has a similar mechanic to Shin's. Just instead of scaling off of attack, uh, she scales off of death here, as you can see, 45% death, blah, blah, blah. And it also has a trigger quota, but this time it's of 30, so much longer, although it is her burst with a 15 second cooldown and all of that. This does also only apply to basic attacks, so there's that as well. But if it's anything as good as Shin's, but with a trigger quota of 30 and them not needing to be cryo, I am quite excited to try this out. And her second passive here does tie into this as well. The normal attack damage bonus granted by her burst is further increased depending on how many different elements you have. So if you have four geos in your team, it's only going to give you a little 2.5% bonus, but if you have four different elements, it'll give you a nice 11.5% bonus. My goal for Yunjin would be primarily to focus on her burst buffs. Um, so we're going to be building her with as much death as possible. Uh, obviously these numbers look pretty big, but it is, you know, scaling off of her death and it's kind of hard to get death super high. Her shield looks decently strong as well, but unfortunately that's only for her and only during casting. So it, I don't know, that's not even really worth looking at. Thankfully her burst is somewhat cheap and only costs 60 uh, to use. We should also talk about consolation. We got her up to C2, uh, see what we have, see what we're missing. C1 reduces her E skill, so her like perfect counter sort of deal uh, by 18%. Solid. I don't know why it says 18% instead of just like two seconds or whatever. Her C2 is really nice as well. Of course, ties directly into her burst. Normal attack damage increased 15%. This is just like a flat multiplier and it's not based on anything like her death. At C4, she'll give herself a 20% death bonus when she triggers crystallization. That should happen relatively often. And then at C6, we have an attack speed bonus alongside the normal attack damage bonus. Uh, from her burst. Really good partner for Eula, perhaps at C6. You know, all the attack speed you can get to make those light fall stacks or whatever they're called go up faster so her burst explodes to do more damage is always good. As well as, of course, just normal attack damage being good for Eula because she does get a lot of her damage from uh, normal attacks. Obviously, I do want to try her with Hu Tao. My Hu Tao is built with Shimanawa. I really build my Hu Tao for, you know, normal attacks. So, uh, yeah, I do think four piece Crimson is better in general, just so you know. Um, but personally, my Crimson luck is absolute trash. And I really just do like seeing big charge attack damage anyway. So, yeah, there's that. So we have another Polearm user here. Obviously, we're not going to bother giving her Calamity Queller. Uh, it's literally like the complete opposite of what she wants. I don't think we have any death spears. I'm gonna check just in case, but yeah, no, unfortunately we don't. The next best I would I would imagine right now would be an energy recharge weapon. I mean, for non-boss fights, I guess deathmatch would be okay. It increases her death by 32% uh, if there are at least two enemies nearby. Probably like the only spear that increases death with anything. <laughs> Obviously there would be a lot of good options if I were to try and build her for damage, but I'm not really right now. Nah, forget it. We're taking engulfing lightning literally just for the energy recharge. It actually looks really nice on her as well. Dang. I think her burst at least scales off of attack, so in that regard she's a little similar to Albedo. Most likely two-piece husk would be fine just for the 30% bonus def. Um, but uh, <laughs> these were the pieces I had like 10% on circlets and stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, four piece it is. I will do a quick little test to see if she keeps this death bonus while off the field. But let's take a quick look at her attributes. Obviously they're gonna be a little lower uh, as she is level 70, but we have almost 2k death there. Um, yeah, not bothering with crit or crit damage. Energy charge, a lot of attack for some reason. 
Does she have like really high base attack? No, not really. No, we're going triple death. Maybe there's just a lot of attack somewhere. I guess engulfing lightning is giving her a decent amount of attack as well. So for the most part, my team consists of these three and then the fourth gets swapped out very often. Uh, just whenever I feel like it, it's either going to be Kazuha or Binny if I just want some consistent healing every now and then, or Albedo. So, so I think for now it would be the easiest for me personally just to throw her in my usual team to see what kind of the uh, difference is. I do want to try my hand at some perfect counters though. I never really practiced that with Beto or anything because I never raised Beto. Let's see here. Uh, I think that worked. There was still a bit of a delay, but... Or... Did her shield just pop? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe her shield just popped. What you got, Hilla Churl? I don't think her shield popped that time. I think that was really a level two. One little Hilla Churl attack shouldn't explode it, right? Ow. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, that time I think her shield... Okay, that... Okay, yeah, well, there's a lot of tolerance. It doesn't need to be actually perfect, I guess. If I am actually doing these counters correctly. Try it again. I think that is level two. Let me see what a level one looks like. Yeah, that's level one. Definitely, we were doing level twos because there was a much bigger, like, flashy radius and everything. Yeah, you really don't need to be that precise, honestly. So I do just kind of want to see what her normal attack uh, bonus looks like. Um... What, we're getting like an 847 with a Zhongli poke here? Not a ton, obviously. Let's go ahead and try her burst away from them and just go back to Zhongli real, real quick. Yeah, it's doing literally over twice as much now. Well, I have to look at the critical numbers because I was before. So from 800 to 2000, seems to be a more or less flat increase though. Because if we take a look at Yunjin's 2100 death, and the fact it scales 45%, Zhongli's going up by about 1100, it seems about right. I will of course try it with some stronger attacks to see if anything different happens. For example, our uh, Hu Tao does an 11k with a basic, 11k basic. Yeah, consistently 11k basics. Let's go ahead and do a Yun Jin burst and then a Hu Tao here. Oh, okay, wow. Now we're getting 15k. So it's not so simple. You really do need pretty intimate game knowledge to understand all the nitty gritties. Also with Yunjin mostly off the field just to do her burst real quick and swap to someone else. She should also keep this additional 18% death most of the time. It's only if I'm gonna stay on the field with her for more than six seconds when she starts losing these stacks is when I'll start losing the uh, death if I understand everything perfectly right. So she's had consistently 2100 death. That is not her baseline. If you see, we actually swap to her and stay there for more than six seconds. And there we go, now it's at two. And yeah, now she drops down to 2051. So I actually think the four piece is perfectly fine. Obviously when she does do her burst and her E, it does do damage. So so the geo damage bonus isn't completely useless either. And then when we swap her back out, of course she does still gain stacks off field. So we can probably see that here. Back up to 2100, there we go. So yeah, Hu Tao's increase was pretty insane already. I also wanna do some charge attacks and see how that goes. Okay, forget Abyss, there's too many weird things going on there. And I don't really wanna test on slimes anyway because they're always vaporizing and it's just weird. Good old Masanori. Come on, Masanori. Samurai duel. Samurai duel, Masanori. Ha! Okay, that wasn't, that wasn't perfect timing enough. Also, I have to remember to mainly keep her off field so she keeps those stacks. Hu Tao is now under 50%. We'll just try and keep her under 50 so it's consistent. So yeah, we're getting a uh, 13-6. Stop blocking Masanori and please start criticaling Hu Tao. 14K, 13-6-10, 13-6-10. I just need to see a consistent number for like more than two seconds. Whatever, let's say 14K. We're gonna go ahead and do a burst now and quickly swap back to Hu Tao. And here we go. Please critical at least one Su Tao. 19. 18. 18. 18. Just trying to only do the first hit of, because I know she has different multipliers as everyone does. Yeah, very consistently 13, 6, 10. Okay, now we're going to go to Yunjin and go ahead and try that again. 18, 7, 9. 18, 7, 9. 19. What, for whatever reason, maybe Zhongli's 
four piece proct. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, we're still getting like a 5k on normal attacks increase. So it's obviously not just like a flat bonus that gets tacked on to your damage. You know what I mean? It's somewhere in the multiplier chain. I don't know really, but uh, let's try some vaporized charge attacks now. 76. That's no way just going to die too fast, I guess. My usual pretty basic rotation of Zhongli water dude. Yeah. It's a little hard to see, but I'm seeing mainly some... I did see a 76, 76 something, 74. 74 to 76k. Let's see if there's a decent difference there after using Yunjin's burst. All right, here we go. 76, 40, 76. There's almost no difference at all. Oh wait, does that really only count for normal attacks? Charged? No charged? Yeah, I remember there was something else like this where I got a little confused, but... I mean, to be fair, it is a little confusing. Like here, it says normal attack, cloud, grazing, strike. Everything contained in here should be normal attack, but then over here, normal attack is just the perform blah, 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 and then the charge attack is different, plunging attack is different, but like all these multipliers are within normal attack, so yeah, it's weird. I guess charge... Wait, no, really? Yeah, but usually when it says normal attack damage, it does just include the normal attack. Okay, well then, Hu Tao is probably not going to be a great partner for her. I'm not sure who would. Uh, most that I can think of off the top of my head do most of their damage with charge attacks. Uh, the ones I'm using right now anyway, Hu Tao, Ito, Xiao is plunge, Ganyu is charged, Ayaka might be both. I'm personally mostly charging with her. Same with Shogun, mostly charge attacking with her. Although as far as I remember, the attacks she's doing in burst mode count as burst attacks, so I don't know if that would even work. Kaching charged. Kokomi, maybe. <laughs> oh, and Yoimiya. Yoimiya. Yoimiya might be the first good contender here. She's definitely doing most of her damage with normal attacks. Uh, Diluc, eh. Ningguang does some decent damage with normals, but I am still not feeling it. Klee and Yinfei, nope. They're charged as well. Like, everyone is charged attack. I mean, I guess most of the Greatsword DPSs might fit, because most Greatsword charge attacks kind of suck. Ito being an exception, of course. For Eula, as we mentioned earlier, she would be a really good uh, support for Eula at C6, so where she increases the uh, normal attack speed as well. But yeah, Eula gets the majority of her damage from when her burst explodes. Obviously, boosting the damage of her normal attacks is a, is a nice bonus, but I would say more importantly would come at C6 when Yunjin can also increase her attack speed. I guess since the only one I could really think might be good would be Yoimiya, we're gonna try. It is good we're allowed 30 for the trigger quota because Yoimiya fires decently fast. My Yoimiya isn't the best well built ever, but regardless, I just want to see the difference. So just starting off here with some, uh, yeah, I saw 6400 in there. Yeah, so uh, the first basic, I think, is mainly what, what we're going to look at. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the burst. We got to get Zhongli shield back, though, first. And here we go. One. 10,000. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we're getting uh, 10Ks now. Come on, Samurai Showdown. I want to get this at least once. Here we go. Boop. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's enough for me. Now we're going to do the normal rotation. Water dude and all. You know. Oh, wait. He's going to die soon. Let's see. I, I want to see the big number. Yeah, the 28k, 34k vaporize. That's what we're going to be comparing to. 26k. All right. I want to do that once more without Yunjin's buff. Uh, just to get, you know, concrete idea. Yeah, 33. If we can see a 40k Yomiya basic, I'd be happy with Yunjin's performance here. Here we go. Gonna burst. And... Doo -doo. Where is it? Ah, he's dying too fast. No! Yunjin burst. Yoimiya E. Where is it? 43! There it is! Nice! Not bad at all. 39? It's probably gone by now. She does fire pretty quickly. Yeah, so I'm not too sure how to feel about her. Obviously, I kind of wanted to use her with Hu Tao, but she doesn't seem to do anything for her uh, charged attack, so... Yeah. Part of me just wants to go back and test it again. Uh, cause I, I, I only looked at it once, maybe it was a fluke, maybe I did something wrong, maybe it does count for charge attacks, but I really, I really don't think it does, and that's sad. I just can't face the truth. Yeah, Yoimiya, Eula at C6. I can't really think of anyone else. Obviously, drop it in the comments down below. Uh, who is her best, who is her best DPS, Yunjin here? The damage she does boost is boosted by a decent amount though, so there's that at least. 
But yeah, make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below. I'm dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed. It's always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks, as always, for watching. And until next time.